in the figure is driven clockwise at 100 rpm the ring gear is held stationary for the number of teeth shown on the gears the arm rotation at or the the arm rotates at zero rpm option b 20 rpm option c 33.33 rpm and option d is 666.67 rpm okay um all these questions are previous year questions um so let's say take this figure okay so the sun gear is we have 20 number of teeth then we have planet gear with 30 number of teeth and we have ring gear with a 60 number of teeth sun this is planet and this is the ring okay so try to solve this question think on it and uh, let me know your answer see if the question is like uh, the arm is fixed whenever the arm is fixed this gear train you know like sun and planet gear will work as a simple gear train but here arm is not fixed so it is no more a simple gear train you have to um, treat it as ep cyclic gear train only so then um, sun gear in this figure is driven clockwise at uh, 100 rpm okay the ring gear is held stationary the number of teeth shown on the gears uh, you already have Okay, one of the gears. Uh, let okay. Uh, what is the question? The arm rotates at. Okay, gears. Okay, the number of teeth are the gear shown. Okay, on the gear. The arm rotation is at. Or the arm rotates at. Okay, so the axis arm rotation. This is the arm. Okay. Try to solve this. I'll give you uh, uh, one or two more minutes. Anyone? Okay. Uh, let me give you some hint here. So, if you remember the formula here, um, um, n sun okay for example minus n arm divided n planet or rather than planet we just take uh, now uh, ring also and ring gears minus is equal to minus by t sun uh, No, uh, no, Shruti, that's incorrect. They are asking us, uh, see, why I am I am using this formula? Not I am why I am not using planet because we don't know the speed of uh, planet gear. They have given two inputs to us. One is the speed of the um, sun gear, and they have given the speed of the ring gear. Ring gear is fixed. Nr is zero. And uh, gear is in this case is rotating 100 rpm clockwise, so I should write it as 100 minus Na divided by 0 minus Na that is equal to minus time TR is uh, minus 60 and sun gear is 70.
let me just check whether it is uh, uh, 60 or 80 just a minute sorry yeah i think you are correct then maybe um, this, this is not 60 this is 80 just correct it okay Corrected, it is 80. Twenty, thirty, and eighty. So how much is it is? It's minus four. Minus four you will get and plus minus will become plus four NA. Okay. And this minus NA will come there. It is five times NA is equal to hundred. And here now you will get 20. Okay, 20 RPM. So that's why um, option B is correct in this case. See, uh, understand the basic concept. If you are treating sun and planet together, their minus sun will come because if sun rotates in clockwise, planet will rotate in clockwise. Okay. If you are working with a planet and ring, then minus sign will not come because planet gear and ring gear are in mesh with each other and they will have a, let's say, um, they will have same direction. So if planet gear is rotating in counterclockwise direction, ring gear will also in, rotate in counterclockwise direction. Okay, in this case it's fixed, but in general I'm saying. So that's why. Uh, I have not multiplied minus two times. Okay, so whenever I am treating sun and ring gear, I am just using minus sun. Why? Because I know that if sun is rotating clockwise, planet will rotate in counterclockwise, and then ultimately the ring gear will also supposed to be um, rotate in counterclockwise direction. Okay, so that is the reason we have uh, minus sun there. <coughs> is it clear uh, why that minus is coming? Okay, we have one question here. Uh, whenever sun gear is given, we have to consider planet gear even if it is not given in the question. See, in this question, this figure is given to you. Okay, but if they are giving you the uh, question from the ep cyclic gear train either sun and, sun and planet has to be there okay either they, you will have a ring gear or you may not have ring gear so ring gear is let's say uh, a not necessary thing here but planetary gear train should always have sun gear and planet even so if then only we can say it as a planetary gear train because the arm connects these two gears together okay is it clear shruti so Planetary gear train consists of sun as well as planet, but it may contain a ring gear, it may not contain the ring gear. Okay, the problem, the first problem which we have studied, like when we are studying this, we were studying this concept, there we haven't used ring gear, but in this question we are using. Okay, but yeah, what I want you to know from this question is uh, whenever, like in whatever is the direction of rotation of the planet the same is will be that of ring okay um, so whatever is the direction of sun the opposite will be there for the ring that's why that minus sign is coming in this formula okay can i proceed to the next slide okay Let's take a theoretical question mm. just to um, <coughs> understand uh, uh, our knowledge. Uh, worm wheel cross helical gears you have to match A and B, okay? Um, then um, bubble gears then uh, you have spur gear and the on B side you have um, 
first one is parallel shafts then we have non parallel non intersecting shafts okay and then we have um, non parallel intersecting shaft okay and the last one is large large speed ratio okay so can you tell me uh, warm wheels when we use warm wheels warm wheels is fine that we have non parallel non intersecting shaft but it also used for la large speed reduction so better uh, match for uh, warm wheel is i would say large speed reduction here though uh, it is a non parallel non intersecting shaft because we have cross helical gears also and the cross helical gears are non parallel non intersecting shafts okay so that's why i am making a match like this because the warm and warm wheels are non parallel non intersecting shaft but uh, they are well known for the large speed ratios um so that's why uh 41 is the what we can match then bevel gears we know and uh, non parallel intersecting shafts we use okay not necessarily 90 degree okay remember it uh, if we have 90 degree angle and both the gears pinion and gear is of same size we call it as a meter gear you know okay that is special type of bevel gear so um, but in general we have if we are non parallel shafts um, uh, then also we call it as a bevel gears okay Uh, most of the time we see figures with a perpendicular axis for the bevel gears but that doesn't mean that they are used only for perpendicular shafts okay they are used for any intersecting shafts okay and spur gear we already know that is for parallel shafts yeah okay let me give you another question um the arm oa of an ep cyclic gear train shown in uh, below figure revolves counter clockwise about o revolves counter clockwise okay about o with an angular velocity angular velocity of 4 radian per second okay. both the gears are of same size both the gears are of same size the angular velocity of c the angular velocity of c if the sun gear is fixed gear if the sun gear b is fixed okay so let me show you the figure Okay, so this is sun gear B. 
this is C and this is RMA. Okay. And you have the options. Four radian per second. Option B eight radian per second. Option C ten radian per second. And option D twelve radian per second. Okay. So think on this question. So MOA they have given the velocity that is rotating counterclockwise at four radian per second. Okay, and they have given you that um, sun gear is fixed. So I don't think any issue in this question is a pretty straightforward. Should be able to solve it. So the previous question also, like where we have studied a planetary gear train, I have not solved it by using like a table. Okay, I don't suggest you to solve it by using table because it will take little time. Okay, in, in university exam that's fine, you can do it. You have enough time to do. Um, but here I would suggest not to use that uh, method of um, tabular method. Try to use the. Uh, the relative velocity method itself and in case you are finding it difficult then only just go for the tabular method can anyone tell me the answer in this case yeah uh, no a is not the correct answer so if you see here omega c Minus omega a divided by omega b minus omega a is equal to minus of t b by t c. Okay, so as simple as it is. So um, omega omega c is what you are supposed to calculate. Omega is four minus four minus as it is. I am considering counterclockwise as positive, so minus 4 omega b is 0 because the gear, sun gear is fixed, the sun gear b is fixed, they have given. So 0 minus 4 is equal to minus 1 because TA, TB and TC are same, sun and planet gear is of same number of size or same number of teeth. Okay. Uh, because they are of the same size means their diameter is same and they are me in mesh with each other means their module is same and uh, if module is same diameter same means number of teeth are also same okay because module is equal to how much it is d by t right and whenever two gears are in mesh with each other means their module has to be same and uh, if diameter is same then number of teeth are also same that is what given in this question directly okay so that's why minus one i'm writing directly so minus one into minus four it will become plus four then minus four this minus four goes that side four plus four it will become eight so the option b is correct in this case eight yeah is it clear can i proceed to the next slide yeah okay Just a minute. <coughs> oh, take a question. Uh, let me. Take this one. Compound gear train. Yeah, I am giving you the compound gear train. Um, PQR. 
S. Okay. So this is uh, let me. This is gear P. This is gear Q. Gear R. And then we have gear S. P, Q, R, and S. Okay. So um, this is the given data. Uh, we have number of twists on P are um, 20, Q on on Q we have 40, then we have 15, and then again we have 20. Okay, this is how our number of twists are given. The gears Q and P are mounted on the shape same shafts. So you can clearly, uh, sorry, gears Q and R are mounted on the same shafts as you can see in this figure. <coughs> okay, the diameter of gear Q is twice as that of R. So, take take this question. Um, what apart from this, what what is given to you? Diameter of gear Q is twice that of gear R. Okay, the diameter of gear Q is twice that of gear R. <coughs> if the module of the gear R is two mm. Module of gear R is 2 mm. The center distance in millimeter between P and S is center distance between P and S is okay. So you are supposed to find out this distance. Enter distance between. Yes, I'll uh, repeat the question. So a compound gear train is given here. P Q R S T. The shafts, sorry, uh, the gears Q and R are mounted on the same shaft. The diameter of the gear Q is twice as that of gear R. Okay, and if the module of gear R is two millimeter, then center distance. Between gear P and S in millimeters is okay, and uh, let me give you some options here 40, 80, 120, 160. <coughs> Try to solve this question. I'll wait for one more minute. They have given number of teeth. They have given module. You know the formula between module and diameter and number of teeth. Make use of that. So hint here is module is equal to d by t. Okay. Module of gear R is given to you. Yeah. Use this hint to solve. Yeah. Solve it. Yes, 80 is the correct answer, Shruti. Correct. Option B is correct here, 80. So, as I said, this is your start point. Module is equal to D by T. So, from this, you can get the diameter, which is a module is given and teeth is given. For which gear you have, they have given the module? Module given for R gear. So, module of R gear is 2. So, diameter of the R gear will be Two times number of teeth on that gear with 15, so diameter of R gear is 30. Okay, whenever two gears are in mesh, they should have same module. They must have same module. So module of gear S is also two. Okay, so um, 
diameter of S gear also it's a two times pitch on it, it will be 40. So it is clear till so the diameter of S, you got the diameter of um, R. It's time to find the diameter of Q and P. It's only they have given you diameter of Q is twice that of R. So what is the diameter of Q? <coughs> the Q will be equal to two times diameter of the gear R, which is um, two times thirty, which is sixty. Okay, and uh, whenever two gears are in mesh, their module is has to be same. So means module of gear P and module of gear R is same. So using that, I will say module of P has to be equal to module of R. What it will give me is diameter of the gear P divided by number of tits on gear P has to be equal to diameter of the Q divided by number of tits on Q. Okay, we know all these things except diameter of the P and which is what you can calculate here. Diameter of P will be equal to diameter of Q which is 60. Number of tits on gear P is 20. Number of tits on gear Q is 40. So diameter of P is um, 30. Okay. So all the diameters we have and uh, center distance you can clearly see will be um, basically uh, diameter of R diameter of um, let's say um, how can you calculate so calculate the radius of all the gears radius of um, so just add these things radius of gear uh, P is um, how much we use a red pen here this of gear P is um, 15 then uh, radius of gear Q is how much um, Uh, is 30. Then, uh, we have radius of gear R, which is um, 15, and then radius of gear S, which is 20. Okay, so 15 plus 15 is um, 30, 30 plus 20, 50, 50 plus um, 30, 80. Okay, so directly you can use this. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, you have given formula for cent, uh, for center distance, that's also correct. Um, but uh, yeah, generally, uh, what so indirectly, what you are doing is same as what I have told. Okay, you have calculated, you have to first calculate anyway the diameters, and uh, so you should know the diameter of um, S, you should know the diameter of Q, and you should know the diameter of P. So this thing we have already calculated using the diameter of R and then just to add the radius, nothing else. You have to add the radius of all the gears in this case. If you add them, you will get the center distance. Is it clear? So it is 15. Till this it is 50. Then this is um, <coughs> this radius is 30. Then we have next radius which is again 15, and we have next radius which is 20, which is um, 20. Okay, 15 plus 30 plus 15 plus 20, so 60 plus 20 is there. That's how also you can calculate. Okay, any doubt till this? Can I proceed to the next slide? Okay. Uh, let me give you another question. A, a reverted gear train shown below. used to provide a speed ratio of 10 speed ratio of 10 full stop the module of gear 1 and 2 is the 
3.2 millimeter and uh, 3 and 4 is 2 millimeter okay determine the suitable number of tits determine the suitable number of tits for each gear full stop no gear is to have less than teeth the full stop the center distance between the between shafts Um, center distance between shafts. Just a minute. Um, center distance between shafts. Is sixty millimeter. Okay. So, use this data and solve the question. I will uh, draw the figure. Okay, this is your gear number one, number two, three, four, respectively. Okay. Uh, so, use this figure and solve the question. Um, this question is not from previous year, it's from the uh, SS Ratan book. But this question will help you to understand the concept of reverted gear train. So that's why I have given. So I'll repeat the question. You have a reverted gear train shown below. Uh, used to provide the ratio of 10. And the module of gear 1 and 2 is given. Also, uh, four is given. So as they are mounted, uh, as the that they are must be same. That's why for one and two we have three point two module, and that for three and four we have modules. Determine the suitable for each gear. Um, no gear is to have less than twenty teeth. Okay, this is the criteria. You Uh, and they also give on the center distance. So, make the center distance the shafts. So, this is the center distance between the shafts. So, what it runs? Radius of the first gear plus radius of the second gear is equal to radius of third gear plus radius of the fourth gear so this is the hint you can use um, in order to solve the question so this should be your starting point um, modules are given speed ratio is given to you so make use of it at width Okay, I will wait for four minutes. One more hint, uh, one more input they have given. Uh, I can see in this question they have not given, but later in solution they have assumed. So I'll give you that itself uh, at this point. Um, N1 by N2, which is equal to T2 by T1 and uh, that is equal to phi. Okay. So this is what take it. This is also in data.
So here I assume speed ratio of here one and two, which is n one two, and which is equal to t t one is two point five. So this is what you have to assume and solve the question. And uh, here only there were the three and four, uh, n three by n four equal to t four by t is equal to four. Okay. So these are the additional um, inputs on top of the center distance they have given. So this is all you have. Now try to solve it. Actually, is or less they have given to you mm. because no none of the diameter is given to you here and number of pieces. That's why they have. Um, uh, I'll give you a hint uh, that n1 2 and n3 by n4 is 2.5 and 4. Okay, so as written here, then use uh, these uh, given points in order to solve the question. Anyone? Yeah. Find the number of pits on gear. first gear, second gear, third and fourth. Okay, so let's start with uh, start solving this question. Uh, as I already given R1 plus R2 is equal to R3 by R4. You already module is equal to D by T. So diameter is equal to MT. So radius will be equal to M module into number of teeth divided by 2. Okay. So I can say R1 plus R2 is equal to R3 by R4. R1 plus R2 plus R2 is equal to R3 plus R4 so you can say here is M1 T1 by 2 plus M2 T2 by 2 is equal to M3 T3 by 2 plus M4 T4 by 2 ok and uh, everything is equal to 160. Uh, module for gear 1 and gear 2 is um, 3.2. So it's a 3.2 divided by 2 into T1 plus T2 is equal to 160. So I can write it as 3.2 times this much equal to 320. Okay. And uh, uh, module of gear 3 and 4 is 2 so 2 times t1 plus t2 is equal to 320 so using this i can make um, uh, say uh, let's say t1 plus t2 can be written as 100 and here t3 plus t4 sorry t3 plus t4 can be written as um, 160 okay 
so they have given you uh, the relationship between t1 and t2 that is t2 by t1 is given as 2.5 in the last slide if you remember and uh, t4 by t3 is also given as 4 in the um, or 2 let me see. yeah it's 4 t4 by t3 is 4 so yeah so using this i can say t1 plus 2.5 times t1 is equal to 100 so it's 3.5 times t1 is equal to 100 so t1 is equal to 28.57 as number is greater than 28 uh, i would assume it as 29 number of gears okay and uh, similarly here it's t3 plus t4 is 4 times t1 sorry 4 times t3 um, t4 is equal to 4 times t3 is equal to 160 so 5 t3 is equal to 160 t3 is equal to 32 okay yeah that's all then um, you can um, put this t1 back here get the value of t2 which is equal to 71 in this case put this value back here get the value of t4 which is 128 in this case sorry hundred and twenty eight okay so t1 t2 t3 and t4 this is how you can calculate so here the major concept of this about the reverted gear train and the second most is this like how can we write uh, <coughs> the radius in terms of modules and number of bits any doubt in this question is it clear to everyone Okay. Yeah, if you have any doubt, do not hesitate to ask. Uh, the question is in the question no gear is to have less than 20 teeth. Okay. Um, if you see here, no gear. So they are given condition as that none of the gears should have teeth less than twenty, and that is already accepted here, right? So none of the gear, the first gear, second or third or fourth, no gear is having, um, let's say number of teeth are less than twenty. It's already satisfied, so you don't have to worry. Let's take another question. Um, Uh, from the compound gear train I'll draw the different figure directly and then or let's write the question first a compound gear train shown below consists of compound gear B, C, and uh, D, E. Okay, full stop. All gears are mounted on parallel shafts. Okay, the motor shaft rotating at the motor shaft uh, rotating at 800 rpm.
is connected to gear A. Is connected to gear A, and the output of the shaft to gear F, and output shaft, and output shaft to gear F. Number of tits on gear A, B, C, D, E, F. Number of tits on gear A, B, C, D, E, and F are 24, 56, 30, 82, sorry, 80, 32, and 72 respectively. Determine the speed of gear F. Okay, determine the speed of the gear F. Take a figure. Okay, A, B, C, D, E, and F. Okay, number of tits are 24, 56, 30, 80, 32, and 72. Okay, so use this um, figure and uh, the input data and solve the question. Okay, a compound gear turn is shown in this figure, consists of uh, compound gears B, C, and D. E. Okay, because gear A and F are uh, first and the last gear. All the gears are mounted on the parallel shafts and uh, motor is connected to the gear A which is rotating at 800 rpm okay and uh, output shaft is connected to gear F which is so you can say is A is in input gear or a driving gear and F is a driven gear in this case number of ticks are already given determine the speed of the gear F So, for um, in case of compound gear train, uh, you know the train value. Um, what is the train value? Is um, uh, and in this case, that is an F by an A. Okay, speed of the last gear divided by the first gear, and that is equal to the product of number of tits on driving gear T A into T C into T E divided by number of tits on driven gear, which is T B into T D into tf okay so with this inform try to solve the question yes shruti correct n f by n a is the train value
tests in rpm you have to find um, 57.14 rpm correct 57.14 is the correct answer so as i have already given hint um, it is very easy to solve you now um, uh, it's just a multiplication so let me just go to the next slide nf by na na is equal to multiplication of number of twists on uh, driving gear is um, tatcte which is 24 into 30 into 32 and number of twists on driven gear are 56 80 and 72 N A is um, hmm, known, which is eight hundred. So N F it can be calculated. So if you just do the multiplication and uh, I think N F by N A you will get around something zero point zero seven one four three. And uh, if you multiply NA is 800, you will get an F as 57.14 RPM. That's all. Okay, so it's not that difficult. Okay, um, can I proceed to the next slide? Okay, so let's take some other questions. Two spare gears have the velocity ratio one by three. Two spare gear have a velocity ratio of one by three. The driven gear has seventy two teeth. The driven gear has seventy two teeth. It's it's a one by three, Shruti. Just write again, it's one by three. Okay, the, the driven gear has 72 teeth of ETMM model. Full stop. And rotates at 300 RPM. Calculate the number of teeth and speed. Calculate the number of teeth. And speed of the driver. Stop. What will be the pitch line velocities? Solve this question. Um, 
velocity ratio is um, given as um, you know that is second year divided by the first year and that can also be given as number of tits on first year by second year and that is given as 1 by 3 in our question okay to spur gears have the velocity ratio of 1 by 3 the driven gear is has 72 teeth okay so t2 is 72 okay mm. you can get t1 from it they have given these 72 teeth are of modulate and rotates at 300 rpm so they have given you the value of n2 as well okay so t2 is given n2 is given as 300 rpm module is given as um, 8 mm okay so this is the input data what will be the pitch line velocities they are asking and uh, they are asking, also asking us to calculate the number of teeth uh, and the speed of the driver. So now T1 is number of teeth on the driver. It's so pretty simple. Can you tell me? And uh, speed of the driver is N1. It's a very simple question. And then the next point is pitch line velocity little tricky that pitch line velocity is nothing but the omega into r that's all second question is uh, pitch line velocity vp pitch line velocity is a linear velocity and linear velocity you know is omega into r so either omega 1 into r1 or is omega 2 into r2 so whenever you have these two gears so the velocity let's say it's rotating in counterclockwise direction so this is the pitch line velocity that is equal to omega into the radius So T1 in this case is 24 and N1 in this case is um, 900 RPM, correct? So, uh, so this too you will get by using this formula of velocity ratio. For about the um, pitch line velocity omega one into r one. Omega is not given, but uh, n is given to you, so you can make use of that. So, so. Omega is equal to 2 pi n, so 2 pi n1 into r1. r1 is like a d1 by 2, you can write. Okay. So 2 pi n1 into d1 by 2. You can write. 2 pi n1 is um, 900, as you already calculated. D1 is what is module? Module is equal to D by T. So diameter is equal to module into number of teeth. Module is uh, we have they are given eight. Twenty four is the number of teeth we have just calculated divided by two. So if you solve it, uh, uh, you'll get quite big number five four two. 867 these are this millimeter per minute because um, uh, revolutions are in minute um, so you can divide with or we can make it into the uh, millimeter per second 9047 by 8.8 mm per second Uh, Suruti, just check. Maybe uh, yes, nine zero four seven is the correct answer. Nine zero four seven point eight is 
the correct answer. Okay, okay. So, see, even if you calculate for uh, um, driven gear, I think you should get the same. So, it is 2 pi N2 into uh, R2. So, that is omega 2 R2 basically you are writing, right? And omega 2 is 2 pi N2 and R2 is D2 by 2. So, it is 2 pi N2 means um, which is already given in this case is 300. And diameter of the second gear is 72. That is also, sorry, the number of tits are given on the second gear. So it is diameter is module into tits. So 8 into 72 divided by 2. So this and this calculations both are same, right? Because you can cancel out 2 pi, 2 pi. 900 can be written as. Um, or 8, 8 also will get cancelled, 2, 2 will also get cancelled, 72 can be written as um, 3 times 24, right? So, and uh, 3 into 300 will become 900. So, ultimately, this, um, both the terms are same basically here, okay? These two terms are same. So, ultimately, even if you do a, this, you should get the same answer. 9047.8 because uh, pitch line velocity VP is equal to omega 1 R1 that is equal to omega 2 R2. Okay, so whether you will uh, consider it as for um, driving gear or driven gear, ultimately you will end up with the same answer. Okay. Module R1 and R2 is same. Uh, module for R1 and R2. Yeah, basically, whenever two gears are in mesh with each other, their model has to be same. Then only they will be in mesh with each other. Okay. So, so the, this is the basic concept. You should know that whenever two gears are in mesh, means their model is same. Okay, um, so if the driven gear has 72 teeth and module 8 means the driving gear should also have module 8 but number of teeth may vary depending on what is the velocity ratio, right? So that is what we have used in order to calculate the uh, calculated before, okay? Yeah, so that's why uh, 8 I have used common uh, in both the questions because module will not change. Whenever two gears are in mesh, one can be bigger, one can, other can be smaller. Both of them can have different number of teeth, but their module is same. The one with a higher number of teeth will have, a, with the same module, will have larger diameter and low RPM. Whereas the other with a same module but lower number of teeth will have lower diameter and which will rotate at higher RPM. That's the difference. Okay, um, let's take another question. The number of teeth. Of a spur gear is 30 and uh, it rotates at 200 rpm. What will be the its circular pitch? What will be its per circular pitch and the pitch line velocity? And the pitch line velocity if it has 
a module of 2mm okay try to solve this question i'll wait for 2 minutes <coughs> Uh, we will end our session early today. Um, uh, the and um, we have next session tomorrow. Uh, so this, this will solve this question and end our session early today. Um, and then um, tomorrow uh, again we will continue solving questions. Um, and I'll try to keep the questions ready tomorrow so that uh, we can solve as many of questions as possible. <coughs> Maybe tomorrow I'll collect the questions from uh, uh, mechanisms and machines and uh, the velocity acceleration topic. Okay, and uh, like like this every um day we will focus on uh, a particular concept and uh, we'll revise some theoretical concepts and then uh, start uh, solving questions on it okay Yes, the pitch line velocity is 628.3, correct. Um, uh, the given number of teeth on this per gear is 30 and uh, module is given as 2 mm, okay, and uh, that gear rotates at uh, 200 rpm. So things are pretty straightforward. Um, what will be the circular pitch and the pitch line velocity? Circular pitch is what? Circular pitch is pi d by t. And d by t is module. Okay, so it's a pi times module. So pi times 2 will be 6.28 rpm. Uh, sorry, 6.28 mm. Uh, circular pitch, uh, check the answer Shruti. circular pitch means pi d by t and d by t is module so it's pi times module so it is 6.28 you should get the answer and uh, vp means the velocity pitch line velocity which is um, equal to um, omega into r and that is equal to 2 pi n by r is distance uh, diameter divided by 2 so for the first gear we are saying so 2 pi n is 200 and its uh, diameter is um, not known but you know the module module is equal to d by t so um, diameter is module into number of tits divided by and radius is equal to module into um, divided by 2 so module is 2 
number of digits are 30 divided by 2 so that's all 2 2 will get cancelled so 5 times 200 times 60 which is 37699 millimeter per minute and uh, that can be written as 628.3 millimeter per second okay yeah <coughs> is it clear till this yeah other questions you can expect from this as i said is like directly direct questions straight questions mainly to calculate the path of contact or uh, arc of contact path of contact formula i'll just rewrite here um, just to um, make you aware of that again uh, path of contact is under root of ra square minus r square cos pi plus r square cos square phi plus under root of ra square minus r square cos square phi plus r plus r sorry here it's minus minus r plus r sine of phi okay where um, r e and this r a is random circle radius um, this is random circle radius of pinion sorry of wheel this is random circle radius of pinion and this r is uh, pitch circle radius of uh, pitch circle radius of the pin uh, gear or the wheel and small r is pitch circle radius of the pinion okay so you can and phi is uh, you know pressure angle so you can directly use this formula and get the path of contact circular and path of arc of contact also we have i have given you the formula arc of contact is equal to this path of contact divided by cos of phi okay so we'll get a arc of contact and the last formula is contact ratio means number of teeth are in contact with each other is arc of contact divided by circular pitch okay so uh, some questions you can make expect from uh, this this also um, but they are pretty straightforward you just have to put the things into the formula and get the answer nothing else okay so um, uh, we'll close our session early today and uh, in today's uh, in tomorrow's session um, uh, i will make sure that uh, we have some questions some more questions ready um, so that uh, we'll um, will not waste more time in writing the question and small as uh, solve as many as questions possible <coughs> so uh, if you have any doubt till this feel free to ask otherwise we'll end our session here and uh, continue tomorrow um okay um uh, okay then um let's meet again tomorrow uh, mostly uh then maybe we'll tomorrow solve questions on uh, mechanisms and machines and uh, um, velocity and acceleration uh, that topic is quite big so some questions we'll solve tomorrow and uh, some of them may be if possible we'll complete tomorrow otherwise uh, some questions we'll take again in the next class because uh, if you see the previous year questions mainly the questions are uh, from that topic velocity acceleration and um, mechanisms and machines 
okay it's a quite big topic and you can expect questions from it um the questions from gyroscope camps and uh, governors also are quite less if you um, if you get a chance to look in the previous uh, question papers you will realize that um uh, this is what uh, um like uh, are not those ma major topics compared to the uh, mechanisms and machines um, then uh, velocity acceleration uh, gear gear trains and flywheels so these are the major topics i feel uh, yes from gear trains the most difficult question uh, from the gear and gear trains i would suggest like most difficult question will come uh, only from the um, planetary gear train okay nothing else so i don't expect any other like questions are uh, like as that difficult so if you are uh, able to understand it um, then other questions are comparatively easy um, like you just have to um, remember some formulas like uh, module some basic formulas like module addendum dedendum uh, then uh, different types of pitch circular pitch module uh, diameter pitch and um, yeah either they last bit to calculate the center distance or rpm or uh, number of teeth um it, then uh, this velocity of uh, pitch line velocity and so on okay so i don't expect um, difficult questions from this topic um, you may get difficult questions from the first topic which like um, Uh, the mechanisms and machines in the in that also like especially in uh, mechanisms like what kind of mechanism you can expect and all uh, like that chapter is quite difficult i feel but this chapter is more or less very straight forward uh, gear and gear trains um so that's what i feel like this is the difficult level if you um, understood this questions and theory part try solving some more previous year questions and uh, i i feel like uh, you will be able to solve any questions on it after that okay then thank you all for joining the session let's meet again tomorrow thank you bye